Oh, we are getting copyright striked immediately. Immediately. We didn't even have a chance to defend ourselves against the vicious onslaught that Paramount's lawyers, a Viacon company, will unleash upon our soul. So today, because uh, I'm on quarantine, as I'm sure all of you are at the time of this recording, if you want, well, you're being a naughty little boy, and I don't like that, and honestly, your parents should ground you and make you stay home. But we're going to be playing The Godfather on PlayStation 2. And you might be saying, Mitch, why on earth are we playing The Fucking Godfather? And let me tell you. Someday, I love this game. And that day may never come. I may call upon you to do a service for me. Until that day, accept this as a gift. I'll talk a little more about this game in detail, but for now, sit back, relax, watch the cutscenes. We're gonna go through a little prequel tutorial type thing, and then we'll have some fun. How are you? Here's a week's take. Nice. Good week, huh? Yeah, some high rollers. I'm gonna celebrate tonight, taking Serafina to the Continental Club. Hey, baby. Mm. Where's my boy? Mm. He's been playing handball in the alley all day. I thought the noise was going to drive me nuts. Oh, remember when they used to play handball in the Good. 30s? Oh, oh shit. That's a big explosion. Oh my god. My boy! Oh, Christ. Oh, I'm sure he's fine. Hold L1. So yeah, this is a tutorial to teach you about the uh, melee combat system in this game. And I'll talk about it a little bit as we go. So basically, <clears throat> this game is kind of like the Grand Theft Auto games. Uh, in fact, it's usually derided by some people, probably people who have never played it, as just being a GTA clone. Which is a shame, because there's a lot of great things in this game. But the Candy hand combat system basically works by, like, swinging around the right stick. And it's a little awkward and hard to really control. But uh, as you kind of play, you get a feel for it. And it's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, look at this spacone right here. Look at that with the Tommy guns. Oh, yeah, baby. Give it to him. Yeah, light him up. Fucking, yeah, that's what, you know, uh, so this is obviously a Mafia hit, and, uh, the Mafia would probably be a little more subtle by how they would actually do this in real life, but, you know, uh, this is a video game, so I enjoyed it immensely. It looks like it was pretty good for him, too, considering the, uh, pool of blood he's laying in. Hey, what's up, Squirt? Oh, you looking for your dad? Yeah, about that. Um. Papa? Look away. Yeah, look away, kid. Look at uh, Marlon Brando's chest right there. You know who I am? Yeah, you know who I am? Save your anger. Save it. You are old enough. And the time is right. You will take your revenge. Hmm. Yeah, you'll take your revenge, kid. And what better way to take your revenge than uh, character customization? So, <laughs> uh, so here's the basic gist of this game: is in a nutshell. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. I'm uh, despite being on quarantine, I'm still getting over being sick a little bit. So uh, bear with me if you have me cough a little bit every now and then. I promise I'll get better. Anyway, so the basic gist of this game is you create a character and your goal is to pretty much rise through the ranks of the Corleone Mafia family 
during the events of the first Godfather movie. And, uh, where am I going with this? Ba so basically, in a nutshell, uh, the game is going to retell the plot of The Godfather, with some things changed here or there. So, spoiler alert, if you've ever seen The Godfather, you probably should watch that. Uh, especially because it's probably one of the greatest movies ever made. And I figured, who better to play through The Godfather video game than a true, full-blooded Italian-American man like myself so we can appreciate the cultural impact that my people gave to the American dream, the Mafia. And I mean that mostly sarcastically. Uh, <clears throat> so, what we're gonna do is, because this is actually pretty in-depth, if you can see, you can do quite a bit with uh, your character here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, make a cut to when we have our guy fully customized. And without further ado, I give you our stereotypical 1930s and 40s Italian-American man. So, uh, one thing to note here is I'm playing this. Now, you gotta be quiet about this, guys. This might get me in trouble a little bit. So, I'm playing this on an emulator with my disc copy of the game uh, because I don't have a working PS2. And also, I wanted to record this in HD, so I figured. Uh, the, probably the best way to do that would be to just use the fantastic PlayStation 2 emulator on the computer. Now, if you can get in trouble for playing the PlayStation 2 game on your computer, the game that you own, just not on PlayStation 2, then uh, the world's a little fucked up and I kind of hope it blows up someday because that's just fucking stupid. But anyway... This is the character we're going to be rolling with here. As you can see, he's quite the uh, Italian-American man oozing with machismo, right? He's he's fucking jacked as fuck, which I find hilarious. <laughs> I, I forgot about this setting. You can also make your guy really, really fat, too. Uh, so, you know, let's do, let's do somewhere in the middle. And uh, shrink him down a little bit. He's a little husky. He's... he's Fat but muscular, you know, that kind of style. Um, so yeah, and the uh, one last thing is you'll notice he has a mustache. And technically, uh, in the American Mafia, you weren't supposed to have facial hair. Um, in fact, a good way to tell if somebody was an American-born Italian in the Mafia, or if they were a Mafia guy who came over from Italy, was based on if they had facial hair or not. So there's a term that was used that's uh, called a mustache peat. And basically, the guys from Sicily who would come over and join up with the American Mafia, they all used to have mustaches, kind of like this. And they also used to be uh, well known for being um, exceptionally violent and, uh, you know, very effective when you're running an organized crime racket. <laughs> So they were rather notorious. Eventually though, towards the like, going into the later 40s and into the 50s, a lot of the rules in the Mafia about like having facial hair and all that kind of stuff started to become a little more relaxed and you start to see it more and more. But for the most part, when you were an Italian Mafia member, you were expected to be clean shaven and well groomed and all this and that to keep up the public appearance, you know? Alright. Uh, we're done. Let's hit start. Oh! Okay, I forgot all about this. Yeah, so, uh, you can enter the tailor shop. Uh, we don't have any money, but we can customize, uh, the way we look with, you know, the, um, what we have unlocked so far. Right, and as you can see, you're able to buy a whole bunch of stuff as the time goes on. Uh, so, you know, as we rise through the ranks, we'll probably change up our look a little bit. Uh, they kind of reflect us growing in the Mafia. So what do we got? We got rolled up with open collar and suspenders. I think that's what we're wearing right now. Yep, because that's no suspenders. And then that's the open collar. I like the suspenders look. I, I don't know. It just has a uh, a cool thing going on. Then let's... Uh... So there's a lot of different colors you can choose from. Now, uh, 
in the game, the Mafia families in this game are all associated with a color. So since we're going to be part of the Corleones, I feel like we should be wearing predominantly black, because that's their color in the game. Uh, sports coats, let's look at our pants, some casual pants. Let's, uh, let's see here, let's get a, uh, I want, I want there to be some level of contrast, you know, you want to practice good character design fundamentals when you're making your character in a video game. Yeah, we'll do that, why not? Shoes. Get some dress shoes. Yeah, we'll make them a little lighter than the rest of the outfit. A hat? No hat. That's gonna be the first thing we do is buy ourselves a nice hat. And no glasses. We gotta buy some glasses later down the line, too. Alright, let's hit done over there. Uh, so when you hit visit the barber, you can go and change up the look of your character a little more. If you go to the film archive, we aren't gonna actually look at any of these, because these are just straight up clips from the Godfather movie. Uh, which will definitely get our video taken off of YouTube immediately. So, uh, no can do with that. And then the Family Secrets, this is all tutorials about the game, but uh, I'm just going to tell you about them as we play the game, so we're not even going to watch those. <coughs> so, uh, without further ado, I guess we'll go join the family. Oh, we got to name our character. Um, so, canonically, because... Uh, I mean, this game isn't canon, but in the canon, in the canonicity of the video game itself, the main character's name is Aldo Turpani, and, uh, I don't know, I kind of want to give him a little better, uh, fantastical Italian name, so, I don't know, I was, I personally was always fond of the name Giuseppe, I don't know, it's just got that, like, real Italian, uh, you know, vibe to it. Although, I'm gonna embarrass myself because I don't remember how many S's are in that name. So we're not gonna do that, right? we're gonna name him, uh... Oh, oh, you know... You know what name I always liked as a kid? Um, so in The Godfather, there's this the part where Michael Corleone goes to Italy, and uh, there's a character, and his name is Fabrizio, uh, spelled like this, I believe. R-I-Z... I oh now when you're a kid watching The Godfather, um, for the first time, right? Growing up, especially you know, in the uh, uh, the mid 2000s, probably when I first saw The Godfather, um, you know, when you hear the name Fabrizio, you can't just help but think of Febreze, the uh, the fabric cleaner and the air freshener and stuff. So um, yeah, in, in tribute to that, in tribute to my bizarre memory of associating those two things together, even though they're not connected whatsoever, our character's name is Fabrizio. And uh, that might not even be the correct spelling of the name, but you know what? I don't even give a fuck. We're going to roll with it. Like a fucking Mama Luke right here. <clears throat> so the price of loyalty. No Sicilian can refuse any request on his daughter's wedding day. And Don Vito Corleone, he's the godfather. He's the head of the Corleone family. Nine years later, at Connie Corleone's wedding. I am honored and grateful that you have invited me to your home. Serafina. It's been too long since you've come around. What's troubling you? Godfather, my husband was always loyal to you. He died for that loyalty. I'll say he fucking died. He got lit up in a fucking alley like a I chump. I have not forgotten him, nor the loss that you have suffered. Have you ever wanted for anything? Haven't I always taken good care of you? But you know, forgive me. It's only that I'm so worried about my son. He's fallen in with some bad men. Fools. He's in trouble, and... Please. He needs your help. Godfather. Hmm. He needs your help, Godfather. What can you do? He rips open his shirt. It's got the fucking Superman symbol on it. That'd be funny. Oh, I'm such a child. I'm amused by such idiotic things. And I 
hope that hey, the voice Robert child Duvall. be a masculine child. Thank you, Luca. My most valued friend. Don Corleone. <coughs> I'm gonna leave you now because I know that you are busy. Thank you. One more thing, my friend. I need you to find someone for me. So one of the cool things about this game is a lot of the uh, actors from the movie returned to give their likeness and also their uh, voice acting, which is really cool. Now, that being said, there's one very major character that looks nothing like the actor who portrayed him and is not voiced by him at all. And when we get to the point in the game where he shows up, I will reveal why. Alright, the one thing I want to do is, I want to figure out t to turn subtitles on in a second, but uh, the alley, it's a training mission. 1945, the year that World War II is, it's, uh, if it hasn't ended yet, it's going to end, spoiler alert. So, um, yeah, if you're currently fighting that war, ends in 1945, uh, down on the Bowery life is tough. A good place to hide for a kid on the make. But when Luca Brasi comes looking for you, it's hard to stay lost. So Luca Brasi, a feared enforcer for the Corleone family. Fascinating character, by the way, if you uh, ever actually read into um, what he's like in the Godfather novel. Because you only really see a little bit of him in the uh, in the movie. right? He's, his screen time really amounts to probably like 20 minutes. But yeah, in the novel... Uh, they go into much more detail about who this guy is and his backstory and just how fucking violent and ruthless and crazy the guy is. Uh, so, highly recommend you check out uh, some of the backstory and some of the characters in The Godfather at some point. Because a lot of it's really fascinating. You two, you just stay right there. All right. You're going to help me teach the kid how to look after himself. So Luca wants me to beat up this guy, but before we do that, I want to go to options. Because uh, this is also one of those games that, you know, the first time you play it, there's no main menu. So it just kind of throws you right in, and I want to do a little tweaking. I always like to have the music a little lower than the effects, because in my experience, no video game, for whatever reason, is able to uh, balance their sound correctly. And you always have the default settings where, like, the music is overpowering the sound effects in the uh, voice acting. And I've never found a game where that wasn't the case. So, I always turn the music down just a little bit. Plus, it might be a good idea, too, because there's some copyrighted music. So, uh, maybe we'll put that even a little lower. Alright, camera pitch. Yeah, I, I like normal controls. I don't live on a fucking alien planet. Alright. Um... Yeah, before I explain all this stuff, let's just get right into it. Now, Hold L1. So yeah, just this is a better says. tutorial about how to attack. So you can do a power attack by holding the analog stick back and then swinging it forward. You can grab onto people, and while you're grabbing them, you pretty much swing the analog stick forward and back. Right, and then... When someone's down like this, you can stand him back up. And now he wants me to uh, beat the crap out of him. And also, while you're holding on to somebody, if you swing them in a certain direction, sort of like uh, like that, and then let go, you can actually slam them into walls and stuff. You can also walk right up to the wall and slam them like that. So let's toss him over there. You know the basics now. Let's see you use them. Okay, tough guy, your turn. Attack yeah. the kid. All right, so if we come over here, I believe we can, uh... Oh, maybe we can't do it on this surface? Oh, wait. Uh, you want to, at times, throw people to break things because... $10,000 right there. Yeah, so then let's give him a good kick so, for good measure. Hey, yeah. You and me, we got some business. Yeah, I'm coming, Luca. I just gotta grab that twenty dollar bill. Yeah, let's have a I've walk, Luca. I'm coming. For you for a while. You and me were gonna get oh, you look good for me. Oh, Luca, I don't know how close I want to get with you, to be honest. Also, uh, uh, the emulation 
on this might be a little uh little trippy because right now I just realized we're seeing lights and stuff through the fucking uh uh what do you call it over here? And I don't think that's supposed to look like that. But you know what, we're gonna roll with it for right now and I'll probably tweak these settings a little bit later. You'll need a map. Help you find your way around. Together with your notepad. You'll be able to find all the hardest spots in the Yeah, to get with your notepad, yeah, kid, like it's fucking Blue's Clues. I'm sorry, Luca. I thought we were in the fucking Mafia. All of a sudden, you got me jotting down notes and shit? Alright. So, yeah, you get a mini-map. Um, and you'll see that it's covered and stuff. And I'll explain things as we go to them. But pretty much, the most important thing is the X button. The X spot is the mission objective. And then, uh... What do you call it? The, uh... How simple there's your safe house. Get to the Corleone safe house. Alright, Luca. I'll go get to that safe house. So yeah, this is uh the nuts and bolts of the game. Is you walk on foot and uh there's gunshots going on somewhere. Alright. So yeah, this game came out in 2006, which was pretty late in the uh um, oh, here's a, uh, rival gang member. He's from the Tatalia family, uh, because they wear brown. But, anyway, this game came out in 2006, which is pretty late into the PS2 life cycle. And by pretty late, I mean the midpoint, because as we all know, they kept making PS2 games well into the point where, like, even the PS4 was out and they were still making PS2 games. So, um, you know, because of that... Are they shooting at me? Who are they shooting at? Oh, a Corleone guy. Okay, so yeah, that's... These guys in purple, this is the Stracci family. Uh, and then we could join in the fight, but we're gonna get our shit wrecked, and I don't really want to do that. So yeah, uh, because this game came out so late in the PS2 life cycle, it's an incredibly good-looking PlayStation 2 game. Welcome to your safe house. Safe houses allow you to save your game progress, and they can be used as hideouts from the police and rival families. Would you look at that? All right. You can also use the phone. Uh, every once in a while, you get calls on the telephone about missions and stuff like that. Um, this is our actual safe house. That bed is where we save the game. We can get a baseball bat for free. Uh, I. Oh, okay. Yep, that's how you switch weapons. And then you take it out by using the D-pad. It's been a while since I played this. That's some medicine on the table that we can take, but we have full health. And then, I believe melee weapons like the baseball bat break. I'm not positive, but I think they do. <coughs> Alright, let's save the game. Empty slot, we'll save right there. That's a good save spot. So you've successful, baby. So, you've earned a new respect level and have gained health and skill points. So there's some light RPG mechanics in this game, too. Like I said, it's a shame that people dismiss this a lot as just a GTA clone, because there's a lot of interesting stuff in here that I actually wouldn't be surprised if it influenced some of the later ways that, uh, you know, um, not necessarily the GTA series, but other games of this manner were designed. So go to the skills screen in the pause menu to upgrade your attributes. We'll do that in a second. So, uh, the alley mission complete. So as you, uh, as you complete missions, you'll get respect. Respect is pretty much experience points. Money, which is self-explanatory. You're going to use that to buy everything from clothes when you go shopping at the uh, tailor to uh, buying weapons and stuff in-game. And then... You also will usually unlock a film clip, but we aren't going to watch the film clip, like I said. Alright, so, let's go to skills and upgrades for a second, and you'll see that you can uh, upgrade quite a bit about you. Um, you can look at your weapons as well, so the only one we have right now is the baseball bat. Uh, so yeah, so fighting is shooting, health, uh, speed... Street smarts, uh, <clears throat> and then you'll see over here you got your respect level, and then your rank as an outsider. And 
I don't remember if there's enough to uh, upgrade everything all the way, to be honest. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, if, if I remember correctly, I believe I want to give fighting a little bit of a boost. Because a lot of the early game stuff is going to be fist fighting anyway. And also, when you kill people using uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat... You actually get more respect, and uh, so more experience points, basically. And also, if you look down over here, you'll see that you earn stuff called Heat and Vendetta. Heat is pretty much like your wanted level. It's how much the cops are looking for you. And when you kill people hand-to-hand, -hand, um, well, when you kill people regardless, you get Heat, right? And you get a lot less Heat for killing gangsters than you do innocent people. Um... And Vendetta is pretty much like your wanted level, but by a rival gang. And when you kill people with guns, you get a lot of it, but when you kill people hand-to-hand, -hand, not only do you get more respect, but you also get less heat and less Vendetta. So, uh, we're gonna go with an unarmed build for the... Uh, <laughs> I just find that funny. We're gonna go with an unarmed build in the fucking Godfather video game. So yeah, this is our first level Italian-American monk right here. Uh, that's what we're going to be rolling with. And then, this is the game progress. So you can see how you rise through the ranks of uh, the underboss. And then, uh, in order to become Don, you have to take out the four rival families. And you can become uh, Don of New York City. Right? And then, promotion. Current rank, outsider. Total health points, 15 Hundred total tribute percentage seventy percent. So the tribute percentage is each week we're gonna get an income of money, and we're gonna get into that even more in a little bit. So I'll explain it more in depth in a little bit. But pretty much most of the money that we make is gonna go to the Corleone family, so they take seventy percent of what we pull in. Uh, respect modifier increased, so we'll earn more respect by that. And then that's the next rank benefits of being an associate of the family. Right now we're an outsider. Tom's report. Um, this is pretty much like your, uh, uh, you know, statistics. Missions, stuff like that. Money history, suspected crimes, two murder cases, uh, public records. <clears throat> collectibles. There's a lot of collectibles in this game, too. There's film reels, which unlock clips. Uh, there's 100 safes in the game. There's also 24 safe houses and 22 different execution styles. And you can see uh, a, sh a list of them. And pretty much, they're pretty cool ways that you kill people in this game. And <laughs> I know that sounds absolutely awful. But yeah, so this is our rival family here. You can see the vendetta we have with everybody. Everybody right now likes us a little bit. Uh, that's going to change rapidly, as you'll see. And then this is uh, the heat levels. So yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Go hook up with Luca Brazzi. And like I said, you're gonna just have to deal with the um the thing over here. So yeah, let's answer the phone. Luca's gonna meet you outside. I wouldn't keep him waiting. Yeah, hey, don't worry. I won't. I won't keep him waiting. We're also gonna slip by for a second because I wanna. Uh, so if we go in here, oh, we can't go in there yet. All right, we're gonna go back in there later because uh, in that room is a reason why this game could never be made today. The Enforcer. Let me take a drink. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Mm, that unbranded pop drink is delicious. The Enforcer. Training mission. Harassed by corrupt cops and the Tatalia families muscling in from Brooklyn, the Corleones are fighting to keep control of Little Italy. Time to learn what makes the world go round. Sergeant Galtasino, a corrupt cop bleeding Little Italy dry. How you doing, Luca? Hey, kid. Let's take a walk. Yeah, let's go for a little walk. That's fine. Ah, it's less crowded now. I like that. Makes it easier for a man to get his business done. With all due respect, Luca. Uh, first of all, New York money, is always crowded. Second, family, um, if you're doing your business in the street, you got an side. issue. But Maybe you should use a toilet. Must be understood. I would never go against the Godfather.
Don Corleone is a man I respect. By the way, those box trucks, I believe there's a whole mechanic to robbing them, but I don't remember how to do any of it. give a damn about paying us respect. He's giving his kickbacks to the Tatalians. Needs to be taught a lesson. Oh, I'm good at teaching lessons. Let's go teach this guy a fucking lesson. I like lessons. I went to school. Talk to Luca Brazzi. I want you to have a word with Emilio. Convince him to pay his dues to the Corleones. Think you know what to do? Sort of. How should I handle it? Yeah, it depends. With some guys, you only need to show a little respect. Just walk up to him and talk to him. A little negotiation goes a long way. Got it. And if the guy don't look like he's gonna crack? Then you remind him why he needs protection in the first place. Try turning up the pressure, but don't go too far. A man pushed past his limits can be dangerous. Capiche? Capiche. I got it. I know what that word means. Alright. So, uh, let's walk on over. Look both ways before crossing the street. This is New York City, after all. People drive like nutcases. So, yeah. A huge part of the game is actually going to businesses and taking them over and pressuring the shop owner to, instead of giving their money to a rival family, because they're paying protection. And, uh, you know, the protection money, <laughs> in this case, it's almost like you're paying for the privilege for the mafia not to harass you after they already harassed you. And the history of that is, in America especially, is quite fascinating in the most hilariously uh, uh, awful way possible. So, in this game, what you do is you go to businesses and you pressure the shop owner into paying protection money to the Corleone family. And uh, a lot of times, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just do this part first. So, yeah, you have this pressure bar. If you go too hard with the pressure, then, uh, you know, they, you aren't going to get anything from them. They're going to fight back. So, first thing that you should always do... Should go right up to this guy. Give him a little chat. What? Luca Brasi sent me. He has some business he wants to settle with you today. Why should I even give you a dime? Hmm. So yeah, and as we do things, we'll get pressure. And you want to keep an eye on where that red bar is, because it's not always going to be visible. Right? See, it went away. So, uh, one thing you can do is you could attack this guy, or you could start beating up his store. As you walk around, you'll see that there's, uh, you know, as we get close to things, you see we can target different things, like the register and the meat counter and stuff like that. Um, so what we want to do is we want to, first of all, nice place you had here. yeah, we smash that, and you'll see we got a weak spot bonus. And what that means is certain things uh, give more pressure than others. So while we could uh, grab onto him and threaten to punch him, uh... Well, everything is a weak spot. Now, everything is a weak spot for this guy, but certain people react to things certain ways. So, like, some people don't like it when you smash up their stuff, while uh, others don't like it when you threaten them with actual physical violence. Uh, and after a while, once you have enough respect, you can literally just walk into people and they'll just agree to pay you right away. So, what we want to do is we want to lay on the pressure just enough to get a maximum payout from this guy without going into the red. And that looks Listen about good. Emilio, the Corleones run this neighborhood. If you're not paying them, you'll pay the consequences. Yeah, you'll pay the no consequences. Card. Take the money. Give Luca Brazzi my regard. Yeah. So see, we've extorted a merchant. The owner will now pay protection money to the Corleone family each week if you can keep him alive and his business intact. Weak spot bonus plus the weekly income. It's going to give us... Thirteen hundred dollars in well thirteen twenty, and remember most of that is going to go to the Corleone family. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. So taking over rackets, some businesses are fronts for illegal activity. Like ninety percent of the businesses in this game that you can take over are fronts for rackets. Uh, I think there's only like a handful that aren't actually fronts. Um, so. A lot of times after you take over the front business, it unlocks the back door. And you go in through the back. And, uh, yeah. 
so this is the week's, uh, this place over here. And there's all sorts of people here. And you'll see that there's also two, Ital uh, two Titalia gang members in the back. Um, so yeah, talk to the racket boss first when you want to control his operation. If he respects you and a buyout is offered, it will guarantee maximum long-term profits. If not, you'll need to turn up the pressure to convince him. So let's see, what are we going to do to buy him out here? Let's, let's talk to him. are looking to share in the action. What's that worth to you? Son, it's your lucky day. I accept. Let's put a bullet in his head and be done. Yeah, so you've taken over racket business. As it earns money, you'll automatically get a cut of the profits. So yeah, a lot of times with rackets, it's most beneficial to buy out the guy at the racket. Um, if you can't, for whatever reason, if he doesn't offer the option because he doesn't respect you, or uh, you don't have the money... Then you can do what we did with the shopkeeper and like rough him up and rough up the place a little bit. Um, so that is also always an option. And I'm debating if I want to fight these guys. Keep your nose out of my business. Hmm. You got a lot of nerve showing your face around here. Yeah, we're just gonna screw for right now. We're not gonna fight him right now. We'll have plenty of missions where we fight later. Uh, this is a safe, by the way. If we had a stick of dynamite, we could crack the safe open and steal its contents. And pretty much every racket is going to have one of those. Also, uh, we want to grab one of those. And a lot of places, uh, you know, you want to look around as much as possible because there's stuff hidden everywhere in this game. Oh, hello, Mr. Sergeant. You gonna bribe you? Hey, this is my neighborhood. <clears throat> you and your paisan must honor me. Okay, okay. I don't want no trouble. Yeah, no trouble, I officer. Like I, I, I'm innocent. But I'll take what you've got. Maybe we'll see each other around. Ah, that's my guy. There you go. All right, bribing cops. A cop on your payroll helps get the heat off your back for a little while, at least for small crimes. The green bribe meter indicates how long the police will continue to look the other way. So yeah, as you'll see next to the minimap, we got a little meter that will slowly lose its gusto over time. Oh, so it looks like Luca went to fucking work and killed two guys. Um. Jeez, what took you so long? You get the money? Yeah. Hand it over. See? I told you this business was interesting, huh? I want you to meet up with a friend of mine, Paul Gatto. Show him this. That way he'll know you're a friend of mine. I gotta go. Hmm. So, get some more respect and some money. Very nice. Very swanky. And when you see people with the puppet, uh, the marionette strings, the puppet strings, the marionette strings over the head, that means that they have important information to tell you. You look like you want to talk to me. You must be the new guy I heard about. Interested in making a little money? Hey, sure. Yeah, what I'm always interested in making money, friend. The Italians have been turning the screws in Little Italy lately, and now the shopkeepers are paying them instead of us. Go talk to some of the shopkeepers and show them who runs this town. Hmm. All right. So we got a couple of different objectives here, and we haven't quite leveled up yet. Objectives. So we could go meet Poligato. That's what the. Uh, uh, the blue symbol is, or we extort businesses to earn money. And you can also look at the map here, and I should probably show you the map. So, if you look over here, right, this is the map, and it controls a little awkwardly, if I remember correctly. But, you can see that it has, like, everything you could ever need marked. Um, you got where your objective is, safe houses, different businesses. The lion shield symbols are Corleone-owned businesses. We don't own a lot, actually, as you see. Um... And then, uh, yeah, let's go over the families for a second. So, there's the Tatalia family, who are based out of Brooklyn, over here. And if you go here, you'll see the majority of businesses in Brooklyn are owned by them. And, uh, they wear brown. Then, the next strongest family, I believe... So, like, the Tatalias are the weakest. Their guys have the lowest amount of health, uh, they do the least amount of damage... Then there's the Cuneos, which are the red, and they're based in Hell's Kitchen, which is uh, over here. And as you see, the majority of businesses in Hell's Kitchen belong to them. And uh, 
after that, you get the Stracci family, who we talked about there in like a bluish purple type getup, and they are actually located in New Jersey. And you can actually go to a little neighborhood area in New Jersey where they own the bulk of the businesses there. And then last and not least, there is the Barzini family, who I there we go. They wear green right there on Dwayne Street. And uh, if you go up, they are primarily in control of... They're a bit spread out, but they're mostly concentrated right here in Midtown. I think that's the name of this, right? Midtown? Is that the... Uh, yeah, Midtown, right? So uh, that's the basic gist of it. And then, obviously, all the gun symbols are places you can go to get guns and stuff like that. Um... That cross symbol, I think, is a uh, church. Um, Police, you can find out where the police station is. uh, Stuff like that. The money symbol, I think, is a bank. I'm not positive. Um, Oh, and then you have this symbol over here. Uh, If you look at it, it looks similar to the police symbol. But it's actually um, an FBI agent. And we'll talk about them as they become important. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can do in this game. Oh, in fact, I should have just done this so I could show you. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. And then this gives you a list of Corleone businesses, Barzini businesses, Cuneo, Stracci, Italia. Right? So, and then you can also see the heat and vendetta level for each area. And you can also see the controlling family. So right now... This area is controlled by the Corleone, uh, by the Tatalias, even though it's technically a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, um, co- supposed to be the Corleone area, but it's kind of like gives you your first major goal, which is to go take over things. And that is flashing for some reason. I think they want me to go take that over. So I'm going to go take off, take over that business. Uh, and we could steal a car. And we might as well just do it so I can show you how the driving goes in this game. So yeah, let's uh... And you see we got a little bit of heat, but ideally the uh... the green bar there will kind of keep the cops from uh... really chasing after us. So it's important you bribe the cops as often as you can, and I'm going the wrong way and uh... we just killed that guy. <laughs> Alright, uh... We're going the opposite direction of where we want to go. We want to be going this way. And then I think... Uh, I don't know. Hold on. Let me look at the... I should have marked the waypoint. In fact, why don't I do that? Why don't I uh, mark that there? Yeah, let's drive on over there. And there's not a lot of car types in this game. Understandable because of the technology level, I suppose. But there's pickup trucks like this, which are pretty much like the heavy-duty trucks. So, like, these trucks are a lot harder to get destroyed. Then you'll notice that uh, this car right here is the most common car. You'll see that a lot. Um, I'm not a car guy, so I don't really know the names uh, or models of these older cars, especially. Um, That's kind of like the fast but light car over there. And, uh, there's a... I think there's one other type that we haven't seen. And I don't think you can find them in Little Italy. Alright. So let's get out of here. So this is the Tatalia business. And as you see, there's two Tatalia guys over here. So what we want to do... Is we want to... Beat these guys up. And you'll see, he took out his gun. But, because we're doing, um... Fighting hand-to-hand... He didn't use it on us. So that's the other advantage of doing mostly hand-to-hand combat, is the gangsters won't really use their guns on you. Um, so yeah, there's another Tatalia guy over here. And uh, I don't think there's any money in there, so... Uh, right? Yeah, so if we uh, go like that, we can kill him like that. And then what we want to do is, uh, we want to execute him. There you go. Step on his neck like that. 
And we're getting shotgun ammo and shit like that. It's nice. Excuse me. My bad. So I'm probably going to take over most of the businesses off screen, by the way. So here we go. We got a new venue over here. And uh, let's talk to this guy. People get mean when they drink. They fight. I can keep your place safe. Never. I got powerful friends too, you know. No, I'm sure you do. All right, so keep an eye on that uh, bar over there. We want to maybe break his register. But so, all right, so see, that's not his weak spot. His weak spot might be, let's try uh, threaten him with violence. That doesn't really work. So it might be intimidating his customers. Please, let me go. I think we gotta kill somebody. You got no right. All right, that wasn't his weak spot either. Um. Oh, you know what it might be with him? Threatening with a weapon. So let's try that. There we go. That's his weak spot. And then, uh, also you can target joints and stuff. So like, if we shoot him. How do I shoot? You want to die? In the knee. Right. That does a little bit. So we got the weak spot bonus. And then uh, let's put that gun away. Right. And then if we grab onto You're him. About to have a bad day. There we go. We got the weak spot. So now let's just let that tick up a little bit. And we can't let it get too high because otherwise we'll be in the red. It's only gonna get worse, believe me. Yeah, so we wanna milk him for as much money as we can. I'd like to we're at six ninety, I'd like to get maybe uh seven fifty out of him if we can. So there's medicine back there. Um is there anything we can break here? I mean we could kill people, but I don't really wanna kill his guys. That's locked, we can't go through there. Alright, so then uh I want your cooperation, we go. and I'm gonna get it. Kabish? Now we're going. Oh, we could we could probably get a grand from him. Have a bad day. So yeah, let's make sure we target him with all our different guns. You'll get that looks about good. If you don't pay me what I want, you'll get my payments every week. Perfect. That's what I want. All right. Let's make our way through here, and then. That unlocked a couple of different things. Well, I'm gonna break those with you guys. Let's execute him. And then you can also choke people. Like that. And that's actually uh, another different execution, I thought. Yep. We got some pistol ammo. This is good. We're stocking up on guns for when we actually are going to use them. And let's get out of here for a second. And we want to go into this room. Right. Throw him around. Stand him up. And then uh, if we s kill him by slamming him into the wall, I believe that's a uh, another execution. Yep. And you get uh, respect points for doing the different executions, too. So, we leveled up. Let's go level up. <clears throat> let's do, uh, let's see, increase grab time, increase attack damage. Negotiation pressure is always good. Um, we haven't had the need for health or block yet, so I'm not going to do that. We're going we're gonna to just keep on with the fighting for right now. And then we picked up a couple different guns. We got a snub nose, we got a pistol, we got a Tommy gun, and we got a shotgun now. So that's pretty sweet. And then this alleyway, I think, is just to outside. There's nothing in there. Uh, so now let's go down here. So we got a Tatalia guy right there. What's up this way? You always want to make sure you check out where the different things are. And were we just in here? I don't think so. Maybe I forgot to go in here. No. No, no, this was where we, uh... Oh, we we went outside and it reset. I understand. Okay. 
So yeah, there's one Tatalia guy over there. How much to buy this guy out? To play, are you? Beat it. Oh. I want to buy him out. What is that? Sixteen hundred from this game. Think I'd rather just buy him out. Sure thing, Mac. This table's big enough for the both of us. Oh, of course it's big enough for the both of us. Also, one thing that's weird about this game is like a lot of the uh, a lot of the NPCs that are like important, like the business owners or the main characters, have like very detailed faces. But like your character's face, especially, looks like so plasticky. It's very strange. Yeah, you didn't invite me over. I showed up out of my own volition. Uh, yeah, you can't open the garage doors, unfortunately. So yeah, <clears throat> that's how you take over a business. And like I said, the vast majority of them, if I do take them over, I'm going to be taking them over off screen. Uh, although I'll probably record quite a few of them and maybe like string them together and make something fun. So what we could do is while we're here, we could go and take over this Cuneo family business and also the, uh, there's another Talia business over here. Um, so the one tough thing about this game is the streets tend to be very small and driving isn't exactly the best. There's like a lot of these games, there's one speed, which is fast. Right? So, uh, and then the brake isn't really that good either. But, you know, it remains to be seen. So let's head on over and do the next couple of missions. Because those are always a fun time. Whoops. Oh, we don't need to call the cops. Let's not be hasty here. And also, if you'll notice, our, uh, our police bribe bar ran out completely so we no longer have that luxury with us but that's okay hmm. a grave situation training mission no Sicilian can refuse a quest on his daughter's wedding day. And so the time arrives when Bonacera's request must be honored and his daughter avenged. So if you remember, Bonacera is the um, the funeral guy um, that in The Godfather, he comes to Don Corleone and he's like, hey, these guys like beat up and raped my daughter and I want you to kill them. And then the Don was like, I'm not going to kill him, but I'll send some guys to teach him a lesson because I like you. But you've also been an asshole to me in life. Um, and he that becomes relevant later on in the movie, too. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. So uh, the beating of the the beating up of those guys who did that to his daughter in the movie happens off screen. So this is one of those instances, and you're going to see this a lot in this game, is stuff that like happened off-screen in The Godfather, our character takes like a part in and is like the guy getting those things done. Which is kind of a cool way to preserve like the integrity of the story, while also giving you an active role in making things happen. So here we're going to meet Poligato, a Corleone-made man working for Capo Pete Clemenza. And Marty, Monk, Malone. I, I, so I guess we aren't the only unarmed build in this game. He's an Irish-Italian wise guy with the Corleones. I'm looking for Pauli Gatto. Luca. Luca sends his love. So, you Luca's new errand boy? I ain't nobody's errand boy. Hey, take a joke, why don't you? Take it easy. Yeah, why don't you? Look, Luca told us about you. He's just, uh... Busting your balls, Paulie. Right, Paulie? Thinks he's a comedian. Yeah, this fucking jabroni over here busting my, my balls. Me monk. Please to meet you. Mm. Nice to meet hey, you, Monk. Okay, Likewise, ah, uh, see? Likewise, we are also a monk. We are a master of the black hand mafioso style. What style do you prefer, my monk friend? The Undertaker's daughter just got out of the hospital. She got beat up pretty bad by a couple of punks. We gotta off these guys. No. We're under orders. Just beat them up real bad. So keep you cool. I'll show you what to do.
Hmm. So this is our introduction to uh, stealth mechanics in this game. Don't make Luca a liar. All right, he said you wouldn't have any problem teaching these two degenerates a lesson. Uh oh, this some fucking serenade we're seeing here? Hey, come on. Yeah. Beat up the college punks? Don't have to tell me twice. Yeah, get out of here. So yeah, this is uh, to teach you about slamming people into stuff. So you can slam them into the wall. Right, and then you can also slam people into uh, objects like that. Right, and I think they want you to kill him by slamming him into things. Yeah, I can really slam people into stuff. It's my secret technique. I trained for years in a monastery to master such a technique. Yeah. She's just some damn broad. So, now, uh, this is to teach you about we swinging people around time. while grabbing. Yeah. So they want us to throw him. Right. And then, uh, this is to teach you about slamming people into lower objects. They want you to throw him around. And uh, he has a name. He's Kevin Moonen. There's nobody home in this one. Nah, he's down yeah. there. How convenient to have just an open grave in this one graveyard that he ran into. Please, I won't do it again. Oh, we know you ain't gonna do it again. Jeez, you should have learned to treat the games a little nicer, with a little respect. Now it's too late. Oh. Good night, sweetheart. A little love tap with the shovel. That's enough. 